Welcome. We Hi. are here. Happy to see you all. Um, join us for this live webinar. We're here to discuss kind of viral overload and what's going on on planet Earth right now. Uh, we're a couple of herbalists and fungi who have a lot to share about this. We are not virus experts, but we do know a lot about the immune system and we really wanna share with you some of the ideas and tips and ways we could start to work with this both at a psycho-spiritual level, but also on a physiological level and some of the actions we can take to support ourselves during these times of turbulence. So I want to introduce Dr. Terry Willard. Um, he is a clinical herbalist who is the founder of Wild Rose College and has been through so many different uh, supposed almost apocalyptic times. He's been through a lot of different stuff in working with plant medicine through the ages, uh, about 40 years working in clinic and has written a number of books to talk about how to best support our health and especially in times like this. So Thanks, Terry, for joining us. Um, You're in welcome. This webinar. And you're quite right. This is not the first virus that's come around <clears throat> in the last 40 years. That's for sure. Yes, it's affecting us in many different levels, different than the others, but it's not that much more dramatic. So I'd have to say, by far, the biggest thing we can think about is don't worry, be happy. If we can <laughs> calm ourselves down, we have a much, much better resource of not getting this virus and not having it succumb us. It's important for us to remember that over 80% of the people who get the virus don't have any dramatic symptoms at all. It actually only usually affects the old people like myself. Um, <clears throat> that's why I have to, that's why I'm social distancing from my computer on a regular basis to be at least the two meters away doing those things, all those things about washing your hands, social distancing, very, very important. But your own personal disposition is probably more important. This, so, is, this is a huge piece, right? I mean, uh, we have this opportunity to live either as creators or as victims in our consciousness. We have this opportunity to take this time to go into a place of opportunity to grow or to be fearful. And, and this is one of the challenges that we're seeing right now is people are in hysteria. And in that sense, the virus of fear is almost more powerfully affecting humanity than the coronavirus itself. I'm glad you brought that up because I think fear itself is a virus. And of course, the nice thing is there's all kinds of herbals, flower essence that can work with that. And there's lots of herbs we can do. We're not saying don't take the, the, um, the medical way and use those things also when and if needed but to work with the virus of fear. Even though viruses are not alive, they're dead, they seem to have their own thought form that goes along with it. And the thought form in this case seems to be very wrathful, very Cali, very fearful, that's moving around to a lot of people. So even though I say it's calm and chill, I wanna balance that out with welcome to the Hunger Games. Because really, <laughs> we're just participants watching a global thing that's going on that's played by a bunch of big boys and big girls that are working around the, the, the world trying to figure out. People are trying to take advantage of this in so many ways, and we have to realize it's just a simple virus. I don't want to get caught up in all kinds of conspiracy theories and things like that. That's not where we're going. But there's many things that are happening that are above and beyond what we can do. So let's consider ourselves as a really very eventful sporting event like the Hunger Games, but I'm positive we're gonna come out of this being very positive and very good. This is an opportunity for us as individuals to grow. Look at all the less pollution in the world. Look at all the, you got to be with your family. You get to do all kinds of things. Maybe it's time for us to readjust almost back to the pioneer days. Bring out your pioneer hat and put it on and do some of those things to last out the rest of the summer that's coming on us. So there's lots of things we wanna talk about um, over this period of time. I just wanna make sure we can say that the whole idea is keep it calm, do the right things, do the right protocols and you too can be protected. And, and just to kind of, um, add to that, like there is an, a real opportunity right now to rebirth uh, our world in, in a powerful way. People who are social distancing have had to reflect 
and take an internal authority, what happens sometimes is we get so focused on our external authority telling us what to do, we don't take time to actually go inside and look at what is really important for ourselves. And I think this is one of the big pieces of that opportunity. I know we're gonna talk a little bit about the pathology and a little bit about what is going on with this specific virus, but the bigger virus really is fear, as we are mentioning, and just know that you have that option to, to kind of play that yin-yang scale of fear and love. What virus do you want? Love is also a virus, uh, but it's, a, it's something that is contagious in a very different way that you can use this time to support inner love, inner self support, as well as those of your family and connected loved ones. Be good to them, be good to each other. Even if it is over the internet, make sure you're being kind to your community and supporting each other. This is probably the best piece of the immune system you can do right now is being in that space. Because when we look at fear, it creates a neurotoxin in the brain that actually compromises our immune system. And many studies have been done now. I think over 30 studies done worldwide around how happier people have less medical bills, have less health problems. And there's just an opportunity right now to get sick of other things besides coronavirus based on our fear and anxiety and tension. So if it's nervines to calm you down, if it's grounding practices to calm you down, make sure that you're implementing those types of things as part of what you're doing to protect yourself right now. Many people are living too much in their head and not enough in their body and their heart. That's been a thing that's been going on for a very, very long period of time. Um, and we can see that, how that affects us. And so we really have to go out of our head, into our body, into our heart, get grounded in the reality of what we're doing. This is kind of interesting because um, if I can, I'm going to see if I can share something here on the screen. One of the best, there's hundreds of prophecies about this that have gone along, but one of the best prophecies I've seen is one on Prophecy Rock. And I'm just going to have to... The Hopi Prophecy? Pardon? The Hopi Prophecy? The Hopi, see, Hopi Prophecy on Prophecy Rock. And I thought I had it up here on my thing somewhere. I... Well... As you're looking for it, um, I just want to like to to share about that too a little bit. Like th this is something that's been building for a long time. Humanity has needed a time out like this. Every old world culture talks about a time like this, and so it is that rebirth process. And so I think it's just that's a big piece of it. All right, here we go. Well, I'm just it's not an opening image in a new tab. Let's see if that works. Hopi prophecy. And am I sharing yet? You are sharing, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to see if I can increase the size of this. Can you see that? Is it big enough to be able to see? It's big enough. Okay, so here, this is on Prophecy Walk. It's a Hopi prophecy. Um, I have many different pictures, but this is kind of like a train going on. But as you can see, there's two different ways that people can live. And people, some people at this point in time have split off and gone this way up the, the, the hill and living in their head. And they're losing their heads in the whole thing and they end up dying. The people that stay on this thing start growing vegetables and start doing that and live to be a very ripe old age. So really get back to the garden. Do those kind mm. of things. Work with the plants, work with nature, take a walk. Even if, even if you're just standing on your balcony in your cliff dwelling apartment to be able to see the things. There's no less birds singing, all those things are happening. So it's fairly significant that if we can look at this, Again, this is not the only prophecy that's happened around that. There's hundreds of prophecies that have happened over the years. We're in interesting times. But again, if we can get back to our bases. Into our hearts. Better thing. So let's yeah. look at a little bit of the pathology that's coming down there. Now you can look at this pathology in several different ways. We can take the Western point of view. And yes, this is a lipid-based virus that uh, works on. This is why you're actually best to use soap suds and stuff like so washing your hands and turgeny things. That breaks down the oils, the lipids, the fats on the other thing, and it can't ha happen. So if you keep on showering and you wash your hands on a regular basis, you know, the 20 minutes and stuff like that, these are good. Social distancing are really good. I'm a really big one in masks because I think masks are really important. And, and there's several graphs in this, but it shows the graphs that the countries that did masks through this so far have had way, way less 
viral load than the people who didn't mask. I know they said you shouldn't mask. The CBD, CBD, CDC said not to mask, but now they're starting to turn their minds around. I had to go out shopping today. And yes, during the shopping, I masked and I saw a very not large number doing that. Yero and I were in Asia in the fall and it was very common to see people mask there, part of its pollution, whatever. So we wanna do that kind of thing. But this virus gets into our body and it takes usually three to seven days to show up. Several of the things we wanna look at is one of the first symptoms in over 50% of the people, not all the people, is you lose your sense of smell first. Then you have a sore throat and then it goes down and causes caked mucus. We are going into a time very soon where we're gonna see a lot of allergies among people and they're gonna be sn sneezing and stuff like, this is not the virus. Don't confuse allergies with the virus. You don't sneeze with this typically. Really what it is is a caked on mucus in your lungs. So you start drowning in your own mucus because it's caked, but that is backed up by if you already have weak lungs, you're gonna start creating the cascade in your lungs from the virus causing uh, the, called fibrosis and you're gonna get fibrosis of the lungs which can damage your lungs long-term. That's why they're giving people oxygen. That's why all the respirators and things like that. So, <clears throat> so this is pretty straightforward. Anything you can do to make that mucus more liquid and get it out of your body, it's very simple to do. And that's why in China and in Korea, over 90% of the people who were treated in the hospitals were using herbal remedies. There are certain remedies you can use to prevent the virus, try to kill the virus, but there's other herbs you can do to get rid of the symptoms. That's really what we're going to be working with most here. The simplest one of all is hydrate, 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 hydrate. But when you look at the oriental, or especially TCM concept of the immune system, and I'm going to be throwing all this over to Yara in a few seconds, but I just want to explain it. They don't just look as a strong immune system, a weak immune system, and do it that. They have four levels of immune system. The first one is Wei Qi. Wei Qi is when you're being attacked. So if you want to prevent it, it's kind of like having the masks on. It's kind of like washing your hands. That's social distancing. All of that's Wei Qi. <clears throat> but there's several herbs that'll work on that too. Echinacea is great for building up Wei Qi to stop attacking. Astragalus works in that a little bit to agree. Almost all the major um, medicinal mushrooms work on that. We've also found the tincture of alder catkins is extremely good in this. And the Koreans have been using <clears throat> um, fermented um, buckthorn berries, which are available in Canada. These are all things to work on the the Wei Qi. The protect. first line of defense, right? The first like that, line of defense. That's but after it's got into your throat and start getting a sore throat, two or three days, most of these things are useless. There's no sense in taking extra vitamin C at that point in time. There's no sense in taking the echinacea and stuff like that. <clears throat> the medicinal mushrooms will still work because now we're into yin chi. That means that it's got into your lungs and you're starting to fill up your lungs. Now we got to have things to throw off the lungs. Astragalus is great for that. The elderberry is great for it. It's good for the beginning and it's good for this stage. It works all the way through the medicinal mushrooms. My favorite in this case would be the, the turkey tail. Um, also the agaricon is excellent if you have that available. Reishi is by far the best because guess what? It gets you out of your head and gets you back into your mm. body and your heart. So we want to use these different herbs at different stages. And we'll be talking along this later. When it gets deeper <clears throat> and now you're in critical care, that's yang chi. Now you've got these fibroids being formed in your lungs. You're breaking down the tissue of the lungs and you're filling up mucus. That's when you have to be on oxygen. <clears throat> so we're gonna be using different herbs for different levels. The good news is the medicinal mushrooms will work on all levels. <clears throat> Stragos will work on almost all levels. The elderberry will work on almost all levels. And don't give me, oh my God, I'm worried about the cytokine storms. It's not an issue here. These things will not throw you into that. That's been shown without a shadow of a doubt. So <clears throat> we can look at some of the pathology of how it works. Very simply, we really want to liquefy that. We want to protect ourselves from the virus first. And that's why the washing and your hands and all those things are very important. If you get it, then you have to start working deeper with your immune system. 
But by far the best is to make sure you don't have things that create a lot of mucus. And so diet, 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 diet. Have as little mucus forming foods as possible. It's dairy, flour, and sweets. If we can do that, we can go with this quite a bit. And I know you want to jump in here. You've got all kinds of great things to say here. So <laughs> well, no, but but um, just to kind of paraphrase that, like what Terry's really sharing is is just this this basic wisdom of protecting oneself from outside influence. And it's not just on a physical level. We got that way chi at that level, but protecting ourselves from from negative forces that come from outside of us, and that's part of that first level. Once it's in, as he talks about, it's moving it out of the body. All life, all health is about creating balance, creating flow, needing to move that flow. When you look at the Chinese energetics, it's all about restoring balance. So in this case, you get this when you actually get past the Wei Qi level um, of that protective, which I, I also believe, just to, to touch on that for a second, there are things like your Wim Hof breathing, that <laughs> hyperoxygenation, getting the cells doing moving, exercising, uh, getting all of this kind of, this sort of your body being ready for any type of immune pathogen to come along. And, and I just, one more thing I want to back up and say is that this is just another strong virus. We are well equipped for viruses and we've dealt with them throughout history. Yeah, they have killed people. And yeah, there has been some major problems on this planet via viruses. They've kept us in check um, in some ways. But this is another one of those things that we will move past and move through. The bigger virus here is the damage to your own immune system and your own protective mechanisms by being in fear, by, by compromising that side of ourselves. So going into when we get deeper, we look at the Chinese medicine from a pathology perspective, they use tongue and pulse, tongue and pulse to look at this. And um, one of the articles I was reading, they're really talking a lot about the slippery pulse in the lungs and the large intestine and that whole concept of trying to transform dry phlegm that to, that's to liquefy it as terry said so these are really simple herbs they're things that are in your kitchen already very simple warming herbs that are going to move things out if you do get this and there's a good chance that many people will get this and also be asymptomatic um, but those people who have weaker lung chi um, are more prone to this being a problem than Again, doing that breathing, doing those practices, but then looking at some of these warming herbs that are going to transform the phlegm, like the cinnamons and the spices and all of these kind of things, raw garlic and that type of stuff, is a really useful piece. Licorice is one of the number one best herbs we're seeing, and it's in almost every Chinese formula for anything to do with the lungs Honey. in that way. Right. Honey is Honey coated well. licorice. <laughs> yeah. And and the bulbs of any um, like the white onions bulb, or, or even the white leeks. green onions or garlic mm. and onions and stuff like that. Onions soaked in, in, in honey and taken a little bit of lemon in there. All of that stuff will really clear the mucus out of the lungs. That's all we have to do is protect our lungs, clear it out. Then you can't get the fibrosis. And the, the bigger problem is, is that we're, we're afraid of getting this, but our bodies know how to move this out provided we're in the right health. We have the most intelligent design to be able to restore balance, provided we are supporting them in that. So this is just a, there's an opportunity here to get in touch with your inner authority, to listen to how your body is being affected by this and move it out and act accordingly to reduce some of the old patterns and move into some new ways of showing up. And that's, that's what I think is so great about and that's what this catastrophobia about, times <laughs> really get rid of some of those old patterns and go into well become the people we want to see in our environment mm. i think that's part of it i mean mm -hmm. yeah being able to spend more time with your family be able to spend a little bit more time at home doing those kinds of things i know it's a little stair crazy at first but to be able to do those things be able to plant a garden or even grow in a few vegetables or even have some flowers because we, we need to get back to that underlying function of our life. Some of us have got too much into our head, not enough into our body to be able to work this. Remember, there's more people died of other flus this year in North America than have died in this already. And, and way more malaria and way more of any other things. So even though it's serious, we have to take it seriously. It's not anywhere near a death sentence. Over 98% of the people do not die, okay? And over 80% don't even get significant symptoms. 
So it doesn't have to be that fearful. But at the same time- We have pandemics come through every year, right? Every year you have a flu pandemic come through. But even if you don't see it, that's, that's significant. In Iceland, they were capable of monitoring everyone. They tested everyone in their whole population. And 50% of the population had it, they were asymptomatic. So that means wow. there's at least twice as many people walking around with it because they're only testing still the people that are coming down with symptoms. There's 50 times or, or double the number of people that have it in Canada that are walking away asymptomatic. Typically they're younger. It's not, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But a person in Alberta, 30 years old yesterday died. So it does get different age groups. There's no question about it. It really comes down to what you're doing. Maybe you're smoking too much. Maybe you're vaping too much. Maybe there's other things that are causing the lung problems. Like in Italy, heavy smokers, round 5G, same with Wuhan, uh, heavy, heavy smokers, heavy, heavy air pollution. Again, Yero and I were uh, traveling through that, may it be in a bullet train in that area in the fall, and it's like really polluted. You had to wear masks on just to breathe in the train. <laughs> It's that bad. So you're, you're talking about areas that have had it really bad. So why is it hitting the United States so strong? And I think it's partly a political agenda. I think it's partly uh, other things of the fear and stuff like that. So if you want to protect your family, just take some simple herbs, try to keep a subtle diet, try not to eat too much junk food, try not to have those mucus forming foods and you're, you're good to go to a degree. But it's nice to have some of the proper remedies on hand. So, so what are some of the remedies you think people should have on hand, Daryl? Well, other than like, one of the easiest ones is fire cider. That's a really simple, simple one you can make at home, horseradish, ginger, cayenne, um, and honey and apple cider vinegar, very easy, onion, all that. There's lots of recipes for that. Another one that I really think is important is to have a good lung and cough type syrup or tea blends. You know, so I'm right now I'm drinking a lung and cough tea, not because I have a cough, but because um, I just know that it's giving strength and toning my lungs in this time. And those are herbs like elecampane, you got a lung and cough syrup there. Um, that type of thing is a really useful remedy to have, something that's warming to the chest cavity and is gonna move phlegm out of you. So that's like elecampane, that's one of my favorite herbs herbs like osha root that are very antiviral. Other ones like lomatium are very antiviral. Um, actually one herbalist, Matthew Woods was talking about getting uh, a bottle of Benedictine you know, from the liquor store because it's got all of these kind of herbs in it. These warming spices herbs like, well, if you don't but know- But he does, herbs, he is a Benedictine monk, come on. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, but, but when there's, I was a there's, kid, there's medicine everywhere that way. When um, I was a kid, when we had hunked in mucus in our lungs. My mother would put wax paper on my chest, put some mustard on, mustard plaster, and that would liquefy it right away. So the old wives thing of using mustard plaster, now you can burn yourself, you don't do it right, so, so make sure you do it right, but it'll get that caked out mucus and help making it flow out of your body. That's what mustard plasters would do. Or an onion plaster would be similar, right? Yep, yep. So, so like, like there, I just want to say that we've been working with colds and flus forever. When you go to any health food store, it is the largest section, the immune section of the health food store of the, of the natural supplements. This is something we have all the right remedies for um, already. The important piece here is to be protected and safe with those if that's what you're going to work with. And then to go about creating ways of getting out of your head and into your heart and living from that vibration and that is your best immune defense. Um, eating the right foods, as Terry says, doing some exercise, moving the chi through your body, build up your wei chi, build up your protective um, forces. Take some of this time to get creative. This idea of duality is that we have either a victim or creator consciousness. So take the time to be the creator right now, um, to get original, to create new things in your life, whether that's art, whether that's music, whether that's um, going for walks, new thoughts, new ways of uh, neuro-linguistic programming in your body. Uh, these are the things that we're given an opportunity to do right now that'll all, I know they might seem totally far left, but they'll all help support our overall whole system integrity and immune system at that, at that deeper level. So coming out of this, we're going to have the great Canadian novel, 
or we're going to have a baby boom. These are all, all ways of creating things. So you have to decide which way you're going to have it. Right? There's what, a, there's a whole December gonna the, look like? Corona millennials um, a generation of all the Corona made babies from all the, the, the lovemaking in this time. But no, there is something huge here um, that is going on um, at a much deeper level than just this virus. We've had broken systems for a long time on this planet. And that's the bigger virus is um, business as usual is not a sustainable thing. And we see that, interestingly enough, this affects the lungs. And that energetic is about letting go. It's about grieving. It's about um, the, that, that shedding what no longer serves us. And so at an energetic level, uh, this no longer serves us reality is being checked by a very simple, small organism that has a powerful ability to make us reassess our, our, our whole way of living. I mean, the pollution levels in the world are going down. The wildlife is coming up. All of the world, you see it everywhere. So maybe we've been doing something wrong and maybe nature sending us to our room and saying, okay, you can't come out until you behave a little bit better. <laughs> right? The virus is still in our mind though. Um, a lot of us, you know, it's, it's very hard. I know for me, to go to a store and feel safe is an eerie feeling out there. So there's another piece of how do we remove that kind of dark night of the soul sensation from our body? Is it working with nervines? Is it protecting ourselves? Uh, this, is a, this is a big challenge that I think a lot of people I see are going stir crazy right now because of that. They're unable to, to, to integrate into this new self-isolation world very well. And that's today um, when I had to go buy some groceries, I haven't bought any for uh, three weeks. And it was time for me to buy some more today to, to get filled up. I put on the mask, I put on the gloves. So I'm doing my Wei Chi there, but I also loaded up medicinal mushrooms before I went and I used flower essences. One of the best mm. flower essences I know for this, by the way, is red clover blossom. It works really good. And the three yarrows, the pink yarrow, the white yarrow, and the um, yellow yarrow doing those together, if you have availability to them, can actually create kind of a, you know, a white light, a yellow light, a pink light around you while keeping your mind in the right place to be in your body. Mm -hmm. So you can protect yourself <clears throat> physically with clothes over top of things, gloves, a mask, et cetera. I had a hat on. Well, I always have a hat. I want to go outside. High dose vitamin C, you know, um, yeah. bioflavonoids, uh, all that kind of stuff. Make yourself good smoothies right now. Do some good juices. Get the best nutrition. There's an opportunity, a call to action to reduce down your empty calories and add high volume nutritional ingredients to your life. Like, like, there's no better call to action than that right now. It's, um, now. Both of us are lucky enough that we're living on Vancouver Island. We're already eating out of our garden to a degree. You know, we're having collard greens. We're having kale. And, and, and of course, the, the nettles at this time of year, they're popping up like crazy. And we're eating them in our, our salads or in our egg dishes and stuff like that. <clears throat> but all of this is bringing the essence of our island to us, protecting us for this, mm -hmm. giving us more moisture in our body. But there's nothing wrong with going for a walk out in the woods, even if that is on well, your balcony or if it's around your park, your local park. Being able to be outside and breathe deep is fairly significant. And all those little fur needles are super loaded with vitamin C. Have a nibble on a fur needle as you go through there. And it kind of opens up the lungs. Breathe in those the oils in those forests. That's I think some of the best best medicine we can do as well. And we haven't really talked about the microbiome yet, but like this idea of if we are sanitizing ourselves regularly, consistently, um, removing, you know, using hand sanitizers and soaps all the time, uh, there's also a need, which is important to do, but there's a need to keep replenishing our good biome as well. And so supporting that, part of that can be just digging in the earth, um, getting dirty. I know I've been in the garden a lot lately uh, because it's actually moving my energy and one of the problems I see is we get stuck. We feel that some of us feel really stuck. Move your energy, uh, get out into nature or into the garden or create something. Just move your energy to, to keep it from stagnating. Stagnation is the root of all disease. And I, I don't think we've actually really, too many people have been looking at this, but the amount of deaths that are gonna be caused via depression and loneliness 
and anxiety um, or related deaths from all of this might actually outweigh <laughs> the corona deaths because it's such a hard thing for us to be uh, taking this kind of time out, or a lot of us anyway. Not to mention the economic fallout that's it's coming down from this. So, so we have to kind of distance us from that. Fortunately, our government's coming a little bit to the, the um, front for this, giving EI to virtually anyone. It's kind of interesting. EI is better than old age pension, even though we paid into it for 50 years. But that's beside the point. It's not my little gripe. But at, at the same time, um, being able to feel good about these things is really beneficial. But get out, have a walk. Social mm. distancing doesn't mean you stay in your building. You don't have to completely shelter. Even in London, where my daughter, Yarrow's sister, is living right now, um, being the, doing the professor thing, um, they're allowed to go for a walk every day outside and only allowed to go to the grocery store once a week. And that's the only time they can go outside of their apartment, their flat, whatever the case may be. <clears throat> and they're starting a little yeah. bit of food rationing over there. It's almost impossible to get eggs. We're in a land of abundance still, and we still have those things. So let's celebrate it. And, and those systems have been working really hard. Like big props to all of the, the grocery stores that are still open and to all of the the essential businesses that are, are working right now. If you go into one of those places, treat those employees with gratitude. Um, there's this concept called an attitude of gratitude. And if you go about life with this attitude of gratitude, uh, you'll just, it, it will again enhance your immune system. It'll strengthen your Wei Qi. Just being happy and supportive and thankful and grateful that we have some of these systems in place still. Uh, I think that's that's a that's a huge piece of this. Uh, another one with the going going outside is like we all know that we're social creatures, um, and it's hard to just socialize online. It puts us back into our heads more, and we want to drop into our hearts. I have this um, thought that get romantic, get in love with the natural world. Um, like caress, have some some cross species um, pollination sessions. So to speak, Ooh. hug a tree, <laughs> eat a leaf, pet a flower, you know, get out and just like allow your uh, love vibration, your that that inner energy to to radiate in 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 these times, because that, that has as much of a profound effect on your overall health. And if not more than almost anything else, it's just to to feel from the heart in that way and let your heart be your primary organ of perception. Uh, they say that the brain will entrain to the heart when the heart becomes the primary organ of perception. So, so we've covered quite a bit here. Um, I don't know if there's um, any questions here that we want to look at. There's, there's quite a few questions about vitamin C I see coming up here. And so I want to address that. I think it's beneficial to have a minimum of 500 twice daily. But if you look like you're in a risky environment, I would be using a thousand milligrams of vitamin C, maybe an ester C, maybe a, 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 a scorbate of a vitamin C. Add some zinc too to that maybe? Absolutely. Zinc is really, really important. But you should have that vitamin C every two hours if you're in that situation. Even if you're doing the echinacea for Wei Qi, you want to do it every couple hours if you're involved. Zinc, I would say 15 to 30 milligrams twice daily b6 would also be very beneficial vitamin d vitamin d vitamin d at least um four thousand of those a day um it's it's really important to take that or if i mean i've got a vitamin d collector here as you can see receptor on your head <laughs> my, my vitamin d receptor and and i'm lucky enough to be out in the garden these days <clears throat> working away and getting my my fingers in the dirt um because we're at that season right now um but that you want to keep that going as much as possible. Let the angels bless you, the sun, the earth, the air, um, the mm -hmm. fire of that. Have all that bless you and to be able to work with that. That's just as important as any herb you can have or any food you could eat or food you shouldn't eat. And again, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. And wash your hands, wash your hands. And, and I... I want to say we will take a bit of extra time at the end just to go through questions um, that are coming up. So please just throw them down. If you've got questions you want us to address and talk about, 
throw them down now. And as we kind of go through this, we'll try and um, touch on some of those and kind of add, add to that. Um, another one that, that, oh, go ahead, Terry. Oh, I was going to say another one that's really actually kind of important, and the government has made an essential service, is the cannabis. The cannabis is, can be antiviral, and it can help some people chill. If you if THC, though, makes you anxious and live in your head too much, creating circularity, you shouldn't have it. I'm more into the CBD in this case, so I'm giving my patients, um, even though I'm retired from clinical practice, I still see a few people, I'm usually doing a 50-50 or more often a 30 to 1. 30 milligrams of CBD to one milligram of THC in an oil infusion. Some people call that a tincture. It's not an oil infusion or get them to do it that way. So you take it orally. You shouldn't smoke it, obviously, but there is one exception. If you're a chronic smoker for a long period of time, then actually a little bit of smoke is what's necessary to get the mucus out of your lungs. But if you could have given up smoking before this, it'd be very good. But Again, we found that the CBDs are really chilling people out to a degree. So I'm a big supporter of that. I've noticed some of my critically ill patients, especially the cancer and, and um, people like that, have fared fairly well with keeping the CBD fairly high. Yeah, and, and I mean, in, in that sense, when you're looking at those things, also recognize that we're in a bit of an altered state right now. Uh, we're in an altered state. This is not the normal reality. And if you look at all the altered state medicines, the ayahuasca's and the mushrooms and the peyotes and the LSDs and all of these altered state medicines, the reason that a shamanic culture would go to these things is to shift the reality from something that's no longer serving us, just like this is doing. I would invite you to look at this time as a bit of an altered state for you to see the world through different colored glasses. And so that might be working with the CBDs. It might be doing something like microdosing. It might be doing none of those things. It might just be trying to shift your patterns around and do things you wouldn't normally do to see what you actually, what is actually important for you right now. What is really the most important thing? And I, I think that's where we can get fuel and inspiration to start getting that creator side of our consciousness out and not to get stuck in victim. Another piece that I would, I would wanna invite you to do besides like Wim Hof breathing and breathing like that is to get um, uh, your body more adaptive and to consider yourself the adaptogen. We talk a lot about adaptogenic herbs in the Western world because they help us support with stress and anxiety and, and hormonal balance and regulating the body and just toning the body. I think right now is a time when we need to be the adaptogen that we're looking for, which means get outside, go in the cold, get your grounding with your feet, hot, cold therapies, doing a lot more of stress testing on the body if you're in a healthy state. Do a cleanse, shift your diet around, do these things that are, are going to shift and make your vitality stronger in general. So when Corona comes around or something comes around like this, um, and you're having an experience with it, it's, it's going to be more into asymptomatic or it's going to move through your body much quicker. I think that's so, a huge, important piece. So come back to that cleansing. Cleansing can be the most important thing. So if you're at home and there's no viruses around you and you're fairly secure, doing some kind of cleanse at this point in time can be one of the mo most beneficial things you can do to be able to get that extra mucus out of your body. But at the same time, it can be one of the worst things you do. So if you start getting symptoms of a cold or a flu or a virus or something like that, then you stop the detox or the cleanse or whatever it is immediately because you don't want to go through too strong of a cleansing at the same time. Mm -hmm. But we do want to keep that mucus down as much as possible. So that means you can't order in that pizza on a regular basis. Maybe you want to have some salads and do those. Yeah. Things. And that, that's a challenge that a lot of people run into in survival mechanism times or in this is, we reach to the carbs or the easy food, the easy energy. Uh, it's, it's intuitive when we're feeling stressed to go to, the, to that. I just, I would invite you like Terry is to, to get a little more creative with your diet. Get a little more creative. Think of this as an opportunity to let go of old dietary addictions. If you're in a healthy state, um, maybe it's starting a new rice bowl practice where you're like, I'm gonna do grains with veggies every day and and i'm going to try a whole bunch of different ways of doing that or or whatever that might be for you uh look at 
addictions that are here right now? Do you drink too much alcohol? Uh, is it harder to get because you got to go back and forth to the store now? Maybe it's a good opportunity to slow that down. Um, are you addicted to carbs? Are you addicted to the drama on social media or the news? Take a look at that stuff because there's definitely uh, a lot of anxiety people are feeling right now based on keeping up to date on everything. That's a, that's a huge uh, problematic thing because it's taking the authority from outside of yourself and it's putting it outside of the world, which puts you closer to victim consciousness. And that's, uh, that's almost a, a worse virus than, than even getting this virus. All right. What, so what are you the other vitamins the I do? To... Sorry? Oh, oh yeah. Tell, tell us a little more about some well, vitamins. That I'm, we I'm also that. suggesting if you have a chance to be around the flavonoids, those are very important. Mm. There's a, a scientist, um, a researcher that saw during the SARS that he could stop SARS in its footsteps um, in its path by giving large amounts of quercetin. And he actually shipped 80,000 right. units over to China to work with it. And it has had very good results on this. And, and that's the inside of the peel of any citrus fruit. May that be a grapefruit, may that be a lemon, may that be an orange. So if you have an opportunity to have fresh greased things, make sure you get the inside of the rind there or take quercetin in. And these things can be very antiviral and can really be able to help move this whole thing. And these flavonoids will stop the fibrosis from happening quite as easily. Melatonin also has been shown to shut down that, <clears throat> that cytokine storm type thing that's causing the, the, the fibrosis in the lungs. So these are two other supplements you might think about throwing in your mix. It could be in a big smoothie. It could be in all kinds of things. You don't need a lot, but having those things in regular. That's great. There are a number of other vitamins and minerals that you might want to want to work with. I mean, just even having good essential fatty acids helps protect your skin, which is part of your Wei Chi. You know, having those kind of things in your in your diet is is an important piece. You know that if if you're actually getting like before, so you can do there's, there's the two things: there's strengthening your immune system, and then there's if you get the virus, right, or if you get a deeper immune congestion. So. Some of these basic things you probably already know of for strengthening your immune system are, are, are easy and fairly intuitive, like the medicinal mushrooms, like some of these different types of vitamins and the essential fatty acids. But if you get sick, things like the quercetin and the flavonoids are also useful still. The vitamin C, like Terry is saying, the zinc, all of these protective um, mechanisms. But you, you might want to also look at um, having some things like some good essential oils around. Uh, Essential oils look. are really, really important. Again, fibrosis can't happen if you have a lot of omega-3s in your body. May that be krill oil, that would be my favorite, or fish oils, or just eat a lot of fish. We live in the West Coast, that's easy for us to get, especially when we catch a whole bunch in the fall and can it all up, and now we're eating our bounty. <laughs> yeah, so that's, 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 a, and that's the protective coat on every cell, right, is made up of those oils. That is, on a cellular level, your protective. The other one is essential, like actual um, essential oils that are antiviral, like peppermint or eucalyptus, um, having vaporizers in your home. Absolutely. Uh, this is another Great. easy thing you can just do. Uh, you can also make your own, like to make a sanitation um, spray is really simple. Most of them are basically 70% alcohol and um, aloe vera if it's a lotion to help the, because the alcohol dries it out. But you can start to add essential oils in there um, and that can, that are very antiviral. Lavender, All the pine mint, needles, mint. mints, yep. And, and, and um, what we've done around our house, especially when we lived in Calgary, it was so dry there, we always put the needles in a nebulizer or some kind of vaporizer, maybe humidifier or whatever. So black spruce, pine, cedar, any of those, any flower or essential oil that comes from the leaves of the tree because that's or the leaves of the plant because that's how the plants the breathe breathing. themselves they really help the lungs so <clears throat> you come into our house in the winter when i was living in alberta and it certainly smelled like a uh, spruce forest because we were just pumping that black spruce out like crazy and keeping the humidity high if i lived in alberta right now i would have that just crank right up the humidity if the if the the windows weren't crying, um, stuff coming off and put a little towel along the bottom so it doesn't wreck your paint. Um, it's not enough humidity there. Because again, you want to keep that moisture. It loves that dryness, 
that loves mm -hmm. that kind. So that's what you want to keep away. So there we go. There's a bit of the pathology and some of the things you can start to look at. There's so much more. I want to say that like we're just like touching this, just barely touching this. Um, some of the best minds of our time right now are sharing what they know about how to work with this viral overload, to work with the emotional anxiety. So look to your leaders, the people you trust and believe in, those that align with um, with you. What are they sharing? I, I, yeah, at a philosophical level, <laughs> not not your leaders. Like um, anyway, I won't go there. But I, I just I know well, that I, I do want to go there a little bit. Let's make sure we don't have our social liberties taken away during this this virus attack because there is a real good chance that there's people out there that don't want to do that. And if we want to have a better world, that means we want to keep our social liberties and stuff like that. So we do want mm -hmm. to have that. So we want to align with what we would call our spiritual leaders, our philosophical leaders, or our people that you really agree with their general overall philosophy in life. That resonate from your internal authority, right? Not your external authority. And exactly. yes, because I mean, not to go too dark, but like, one of the problems is that this is a classic setup for us to fight against an enemy. And this is the old story of good versus evil. And it just fits right into that picture of dominating the planet. Let's fight against the corona. Let's fight this virus. This is an old narrative that um, hasn't served humanity at all. It's actually caused a lot more grief and tension and we're growing out of this as a species. So it's just the opportunity to pull us back into this state of victimhood where we're fighting an enemy versus taking an internal accountability. Hey, we created a planet where Corona was easily widespread across this planet to all the people. We are accountable to this as much as anything and we should hold ourselves that way as well as knowing that Within that, the problem, reaction, solution opportunity is to create a more fear state that separates between the people who have everything and the people who don't, and to stop our social liberties and stop our ability to share outright like this, like we're doing right now. These are things that could be taken away from us if, um, if we don't speak out for them. So bottom line, this is a hero's journey. And the only way you can make it through a hero's journey is find the force within you, Luke. Do <laughs> that and be able to really get your own force and be with one with your nature, your gods, your feelings, your things. By being able to be true to yourself and the nature around you, that's the way to be able to really buck this. So we have to protect ourselves from, from getting our social liberties taken away as much as we have to feel comfortable in ourselves, comfortable with our family, comfortable with our situation. Maybe we have to lower some of our expectations on the financial plane, lower our expectations in the material plane to a degree to feel happier, to feel more centered. Maybe take some meditation. Mm -hmm maybe do some things like that that resonate with you maybe it means praying that doesn't mean you go to these mass churches and pray and have the virus spread around like this happened in the last little while but we do need to center ourselves in our own personal belief systems yeah there's an opportunity to empower the individual here um and i think that's a maybe one thing we're speaking to something i've always believed in with herbs like there are so many remedies and we could just go straight up into talking about all the different plants all the different medicines that could potentially help but i i, I just have always um gone to this understanding that herbs are just like anyone else they're allies and they're teachers they aren't the medicine they are the support that helps our body be the medicine. We are the medicine ourselves. So you might work with certain herbs like the Ella Campaign and the Colt's Foot and the Osha Root to help move out Qatar and time, but essentially it's your body moving out those toxins and moving out those pathogens. And the herbs are just helping support you with some energy to do that. So find your allies in that way, but know that you're the medicine that you need in this time. 
And, and I like what some of the people are saying. I don't want to call anyone out, but the, the soups and stews, that's a great thing. In our house, we've been just eating tons of soups and stews, some miso-based mm -hmm. ones, some chicken-based ones, some, some brothy stews and stuff like that. We're doing that continuously. Some person has talked about putting rosemary and cinnamon um, in a pot to boil in there. Yeah, a lot of people, especially on the West Coast, are using cedar. We, we heat our house mostly with a wood stove and we have cedar. Well, I have tons of cedar on my property. I live in a cedar forest and we put this, the cedar in there and some water. So it just boils and has the essence go throughout the whole house. And we really like that. The thieves oil, all those. Yeah, I mean, and thieves again, like, so many people know, like, you know, like we've been fighting viruses in our lungs forever. There are so many old remedies for this. And in the age of information, uh, really, we're, I think that age is gone. We're, we, but we have all this information everywhere. Get creative with how you start to find the right remedies for you. There's answers everywhere there right now. And it's really easy to find things to work with. Don't get overloaded with too much though. That's, that's a caution I would have because then you're back in your head and you're not feeling it from your heart. And very easy. By the way, you've got this covered. You know you have this covered. All you have to do is find the parts out of this talk or other people's talks that vibrates with you and you're covered. That's really what it comes down to. We're covered. We've been dealing with these viruses for millennia. They got nothing. To, they're not even alive for heaven's sakes. Yes, we have to take the life and put it back inside of ourselves so the viruses can't mm -hmm. affect us. And think of yourself as not just a single entity. Even though you've got this physical body, we know there are more organisms living on it in us. You're an ecosystem, build your ecosystem. This concept of permaculture gut design where we're, we're creating leaf litter inside of ourselves. We're fermenting things. We're moving the energy to create an equal ecosystem that's, that's uh, stable and able to handle threats. You know, when you cut down most of the trees and you leave a few, the wind comes and blows those other ones down. The ground cover can't, can't keep that forest ecology in integrity. This has happened to a lot of people in the last 30 years. And we've been talking about this forever uh, from the, the holistic medicine perspective of build up the ecology, strengthen and fortify the, the environment that you are. Think of yourself as an ecosystem and everything you do to protect that ecosystem's integrity, build the complex stability is all supporting your immune response when you come across a pathogen or an invader that's trying to take on your turf and call it their home. Your internal bugs will say, I don't think so. I've got systems to move you out. You are not welcome here. Move on. Probiotics, prebiotics, kimchi, sauerkraut, kefir, water kefir. These are all things that can help build up your community so you have protection. All right. So that's just a few food for thought. We're going to maybe look and try and answer a couple of questions here. I'm going to jump on and look at what some people are saying. I mean, I see we got a, a lot of people on here. Um, we appreciate your time. We appreciate your own self mastery because you've got this. I, I believe all of us are masters at some level. And remember to stay empowered. Stay empowered through this. Don't let fear be the virus that gets you. Uh, yes, this time of isolation is like a rebirth. It's a dark night of the soul. It's a tough time for all of us. And all of us are feeling the tension in humanity, but it's also the first time humanity's come together in coherence for one topic. And that in itself is significant to look at the human consciousness that has come into coherence around this whole thing and know that we could rise up to do just as much and be just as powerful. You know, if you looked months ago and said, you know what, air pollution is really causing a problem. We got to stop airplanes. There's no way anyone will listen, but we did it, <laughs> you know, right? Like, I mean, there are some huge wins here that are also um, opportunities for us to look at uh, what is important. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's- So Brad came up with a great comment and I wanna look at this. He says, if you're asymptomatic, how can you spread it if you're not coughing and stuff? Very easily. 
it's still in your saliva, it's still in your body, in various things. And so we touch our face, our mouth and stuff like that on a regular basis, and then we touch things. So you don't have to cough it, it's not just a little droplet's gonna spread it. If you just go like that and then touch a handle on a door, the next person that comes along and puts the handle on the door gets it. That's why I'm gonna wear a glove when I go through a door these days. I'm gonna to try to find places that have automatic door opens if I can do that. But it's, it's really important that the asymptomatic people can do it. They, they go into a house and they <clears throat> touch taps and touch things like this. It's being spread by that way more than it is by little droplets. Don't forget, mm -hmm. it can live on stainless steel up to at least a week. Cardboard is only three days. Clothing is only once. Probably one of the best things to get rid of it is, of course, the soap suds. The next best thing is the ultraviolet. <clears throat> so I have some reusable masks. When I came back from the store today, I put them out. We had sun today. I put them out in the, the sun. Even my hats and my clothes that I was wearing over top of everything, I hang it out in the sun um, after I come back because the ultraviolet light will kill them very fast. That's that's interesting. You just gave me like this thought here. I just sort of downloaded like, wow, it's interesting when we're in this dark time, how it's the light that we that we need to protect us. You know, Find your inner light. When darkness is around you, find ultraviolet lights to to fix your masks when they're when you, after you go out. Um, hang your clothes up outside. I, I know that people might feel like some of the precautions that are um, being taken right now are are very strict or or almost like overboard. They're not because our society is 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 very vulnerable to this, and uh, be, because we want to slow the spread. Otherwise, we end up with so many people in hospital beds all the time. And so if you're sick for anything else, if you get those allergy symptoms, like Terry talked about, the sneezing or um, watery eyes, those are not corona. Don't get tested. Just stay home and quarantine because it's the best thing to do for the rest of your community. But realize that there's also going to be plenty of other things going on right now and just Make sure you understand a little bit about the pathology of what's going on with this virus so that we're not, we're not clouding our medical system with too much right now. Because let's face it, they are overloaded to a degree. And um, some places are better than others for sure. And that's why we're trying to flatten out the curve. The problem with flattening out of the curve is it lasts longer. As you know, it was over in two and a half months in China. Not so lucky here. Oh, but they had really a lot of people die. We don't have anywhere near as many people dying in Canada percentage wise as they do to our, our neighbors to the south because they didn't take it seriously at all for a long period of time. And still there's a lot of people going around, you know, going to the beaches and stuff like that in huge numbers that are not taking it seriously. And so we're gonna see this play itself out. Even Trudeau uh, today said, that uh, look at it until at least July now. And let's be realistic. He's having to cough up $2,000 for everyone in EI. So he wants it as short as possible. <laughs> he doesn't want as long. Um, he wants to keep it short. But the, the point is, this is going to last out quite a ways. So make sure you get good nutrition. Don't eat the wrong foods and try to take some herbs. But go for a walk. And be take good to problem. yourself. Have a pet whatever you get creative um like there is so much opportunity right now for us to move out of things that weren't serving us there's so much opportunity in this whole pandemic environment to be creative and to really do something of value to show up in a way that really supports the larger vision of of being protectors of this planet um, I, I just, I can't echo that enough. That's to me, uh, the best opportunity that we have in all of this. Yes, stay protected, know what herbs you need, have them on hand, do those practices. But after that, try to move out of your head and get away from all the pandemic news that's coming at you all the time and get back into what really matters here. I wanna be able to in several months, look back at this and realize, oh, that was the great reset the great reset of 2020. So we can see clearly 2020. Right, the 2020 vision. <laughs>
So I do think this is can be a great reset. Let's take the opportunity to be a great reset for our society, for our way of life, so we can become happier and more heart-based, physical-based, instead of crazy in our head, anxiety-based, which so many people are. Well, that's kind of bringing us around to the last. Do you have any last minute questions you want to answer there, Yarrow? Um, so somebody's asked for a quick review of the herbs that we addressed earlier. Um, I think it's ideal for us to put in um, a little, like, like to, for me to just put a list of some of the herbs in the comments. Um, but, I, but I can really quickly review some, but I, I, there's just, depending on the level you're working with, some of the herbs that you really would want to look at that are important are your warming spices, things that are warming up the, the lung cavity and moving out this dry congestion, if you get this. Those are things like licorice and cayenne and cinnamon and ginger, especially ginger, garlic, um, all those kinds of things. Actually, cinnamon is energetically warmer, so it's moving that more out. Your chai spices, your nutmegs, all that kind of stuff. There are also herbs like your osha root and your lomatium root and your angelica root and your, um, your uh, elecampane those kind of herbs. Colt's foot is another great one that's helpful for moving Mullen. out Mullen. congestion. It's Mullen is a little more for inflammation if it's got heat in it. So, but if this is damp and cool, we want the warming spices. Um, so those are all good herbs. Elderberry, the astragalus working with the, the deep tonics for making soups with, um, those kind of things, creating a broth base of that type of thing as a herbal base or a syrup or a tea or a tincture. Uh, you know, we work with a lot of like antiviral herbs and bronchi building herbs and lung and cough herbs at Harmonic Arts. And those have all been very, very popular in the last few weeks because they really support people. Maybe a throat spray like propolis. I've seen some people are working with things like balm of Gilead, you know, to just warm up that chest cavity. So there's just a lot of opportunity to look at herbs as support. Just remember that you don't need all of them. Don't go crazy over it. If you're feeling like you're going crazy trying to find all the right herbs, then stop looking and take Nervines to just calm you back down. <laughs> and, and that's I can like give you a list of herbs I took so. today. I <laughs> certainly took turkey tail, reishi, cordyceps, and chugga in a mushroom blend. I also did some CBD. I also took some echinacea. I took a fair amount of vitamin C today. I took some quercetin. I took some zinc. Um, I took probiotics absolutely for sure um, today. And I took a little bit of, to build up my chi and stuff like that, I took a little bit of ashwagandha. Middle of the mm. afternoon, um, because I'm an old guy, I took a bunch of ginseng, which I do almost every afternoon. And it had lots of fluids. Those are good enough to protect me at my age in this situation. Um, of course, we'd have other ones that have been listed above if we actually get attacked. And I also take the medicinal mushrooms every day. I find that to be a great one, either in a coffee or an elixir drink. We make smoothies and drinks like that. We add those flavonoid rich foods in there. Uh, try to do rice bowls for dinner or things that are not gonna be super um, simple carbohydrate and uh, flour and, and dairy based. Uh, just eat good, be good to yourself, take care of yourself. It's simple, it's intuitive. It's not hard. Your body has dealt with plenty of colds and flus. All those things still apply. Yes, there's some issues with the cytokine, or cytokine storm thing. I wouldn't focus on stuff like that. I would focus on just being really good to yourself and taking care of your body in the best way you know how. And if you don't know how, watch webinars like this and learn some of that. There's plenty of people sharing right now, giving from their hearts to us how they can support showing up in the best way right now on planet Earth. So again, this is us from Wild Rose College. We're ready to sign out here. Um, we'll be looking at the, the comments over the next few days to answer any questions that might come up, but it's really important for us to tell you that you've got this. You've you got this. It. Just chill. We've got this. We've all <laughs> got this. <laughs> yeah. And if you wanna deepen your connection to plant medicine, please check out Wild Rose College. We offer a full practical herbalist program, a full master herbalist program, and a full clinical herbalist program. Plus we have a really amazing Wild Rose Village group that is a bunch of herbal students who are very active. We just did a full series of business for herbalist webinar, but we, we're, we're always adding amazing content into our Wild Rose Village group. 
Um, you can sign up for that on our website at wildrosecollege.com. And um, we just, just know that the plants are with you. They are your allies. Find your herbs, find your medicine, find your people and connect from your heart as your primary organ of perception. In fact, okay. tonight's thing was really typically our Wild Rose Village um, talk that we have um, once every two weeks. So we like to be able to share that with our students and we're happy to be able to share it to the general public. And namaste, thank you very much for being with us. Appreciate you.